So in the last sessions, we discussed about different aspects of sexual selection groups and how evolution works out with respect to behavior. When organisms live in a particular natural world, some of them remain isolated or they live isolated, but some of them remain in groups. So those organisms which live in groups are usually called social organisms and those social organisms had lots of structural and functional changes that goes on between a population within that species within multiple species and all that is called social dynamics so we'll study social dynamics in detail with respect to different aspects of it starting with kinship kinship refers to the genetic relatedness usually it is concerned with a term which is called family so it refers to the fact that one organism is related to other individual genetically so it's like uh, the son is related to father because it has exchanged gene with them okay so that is what kinship refers to a fact and it is about filial association as well as genetic relations right so kin selection is an evolutionary strategy uh, that selects or decides particular kin kin in the sense we are talking about a particular group of family as because all of them are related so that will be selected in a particular scenario okay here in a family we always you know work for each other so in a family there are multiple individuals which are related and each of them might have their own life strategies but all of them work together to minimize the cost and maximize the benefits of the entire kin or entire family so this is how kinship works so in a kin or in a within a kinship or within different individuals of kinship there are multiple aspects one is cooperation conflict and altruism cooperation refers to the fact that multiple individuals deal with each other in a positive mutually beneficial manner like some are working for each other and working with each other okay conflict in a group in a family there is always different factors which raises conflicts and that's also an aspect of kinship then comes altruism altruism is selflessness now it is usually one organism despite getting a specific personal cost does that for the greater good of the kin so that is altruism we will study that in detail cooperation is the process where groups of multiple organisms work or act together for common or mutual benefits so all the participants usually function together for mutual benefits so what are the benefits that they get that could be direct or that could be indirect direct benefits usually are in a group survival so when they are in group there are larger chances of survival because they get better food because a group can you know uh, search for better food but also a larger number will help them to avoid predators then one particular group is always associated with subordinates if it is a dominant one then there is associated with a subordinate group so there is always give and take that happens between that group and hence they are supported by different individual one has to not do all the work itself so it will come on with subordinates to do or help with them okay and the indirect benefits are those that they do not get directly in the sense these are the benefits which we are talking about the subordinates because one is helping other so what it is getting it is getting indirect benefits okay in the sense in a let's let's say cooperative breeding cooperative breeding are the examples where an organism actually even after getting a matured it stays in the same family but suppresses its reproductive ability and helps the other or the dominant group to breed okay we'll study that in detail but it's a type of cooperative breeding where the organism is actually getting better resources by suppressing its reproductive capacities so some or the other way it is getting benefits then there is cooperative mating and courtship where multiple males try to court a particular female but there is only one dominant male which will court or mate but all other will help in the courtship it is prominent in birds and few species which will study those details in well so when we talk about conflict or you know competition or uh, conflict any kind of conflict that happens even a pseudo conflict within a species within the particular group or within the particular kin okay we talked about how competition happens within a species interspecific competition and within multiple groups now we'll talk about how competition uh, a factor of conflict there's no competition per se but there is conflict that happens within a group and that is for 
uh, it could be for shared resources like one particular organism or one particular individual who is dominant will always conflict or try to get the major share so that is the conflict that will happen then there is for mates okay as same dominant one gets the larger share of the mating so few individuals will try out to take the dominant as well so that sort of conflict happens and then there is spite spite is a kind of negative negative interaction where both the individuals who are fighting uh, get harmed it is usually results in harm of any of the other individual uh, might be of the death of the one particular individual and uh, uh, severe body harm to the other one so it is always negative negative interaction it is called spite so few organisms even though they are getting all the resources together they'll still try to get on the dominant one because they want a better position in that requirement in that sense they fight on and both of them are harmed so that is called spite and for dominance as i said it could be for taking a particular position it could be for a particular food resource it could be for a particular mate and there are pseudo conflict as well like play behavior in many organisms it is shown like dogs you can say or many carnivores as well they practice conflicts i mean they uh, fight with each other in a pseudo replicated way they are fighting let's say to learn how to fight in the other competitions okay so that is also a kind of conflict that happens but it is not a proper competitive conflict but a pseudo conflict we can say okay moving on altruism altruism is a selfless behavior it is usually done in order to help the other one decreasing its own benefits so usually altruism refers to a fact where one particular individual is helping the other one even if it is decreasing its own benefits so it depends on reciprocity and cooperation as well so both of the factor are important as we started about cooperation both of them are getting mutual benefits one might get lower one might get higher but the thing is all the benefits that is happening it should be reciprocated as well so that also depends and makes the base of altruism so reciprocity can be symmetry based it's basically mirroring each other i mean there is a mutual affection and it's like it's fine whatever you do i'll be helping out okay so it's like without taking or without caring about the daily given tax so i don't care about what you give and i don't you don't care about what i give so the give and take we don't care about that but we help each other so that sort of interaction is called symmetry based we don't have to do anything for each other but still we are we will try to help with other facts okay but the altitudinal is a kind of reciprocity where you are actually mirroring the give and take so i give you something you return something in the in front of that okay so that is altitudinal symmetry based reciprocity is like helping each other without any benefits okay i'm just helping you out doesn't matter for why or what i'm getting in return i'm just helping you out so that is symmetry based whereas altitudinal is i help you out with something and you will help me out with something else okay so that is altitudinal then calculated here refers to a particular sort of reciprocity which is calculated in the sense i will decide what you could help me with okay so i'll say that i'll be helping you with studying and you will helping with me sports so that is calculated calculated calculate reciprocity is usually in the fact that both of them track whatever they are getting and calculate and redirect their question or behavior accordingly so something i'm doing something which is beneficial for him then i'll do for him in return i'll expect that they, it will be helping in me in this manner or he will or she will help me in this manner and i'll get benefit out of it so i have to measure calculate what the benefits i can get it from there and in return i can do okay so it is complicated in the sense but here we are keep, keeping tracks of benefits and favors that we are doing okay so basically altitudinal calculated are different in the sense altitudinal usually mirroring one okay whatever i give you will give in return okay in the sense that so let's say a monkey is grooming one a particular individual of monkey a is grooming monkey b then monkey b will groom in return to monkey a okay so there is grooming but a calculated kind of reciprocity is like i gave you banana you will give me an apple okay or i can give you banana at that particular time of day and you will give me apple in that particular time of day in the second day maybe or whenever i'm hungry like that so that is calculated reciprocity hope you understood so when we talk about altruism we are talking about selflessness and we understand and we know that natural selection usually favors the one who are selfish so how do altruism work out so hamilton 
in 1964 gave out with this rule where he said that few organisms few eu social or social organisms usually tend to get benefits out of a particular altruistic trait if it is more beneficial with respect to that of the cost okay repeating hamilton said that a particular trait or particular altruistic trait its frequency or its particular availability in a particular population will be more if the benefit that it gets is more than that of the cost okay so altruistic benefits should be more than that of the cost then only the frequency of that character the trait will increase in the population okay so it was denoted in the particular formula where r refers to the relatedness or genetic relatedness b is the benefit c is the cost so it re simply refers to the fact that an organism will only help the other one altruistically if the relatedness is more and benefits that they are getting all together is more than the cost simplifying let's say there is a b okay there is b1 there is b2 these all are b's okay so a b1 alone is getting let's say five benefit points and 10 cost points so if it is alone it will getting lot of cost rather than benefits so when it groups with that you no know, so when it groups with b2 it groups with b2 so there are chances that both of them might infer some cost both of them might infer some benefit so when all of them group together let's say all of them are grouping together then the total entire benefit is let's say 15 but the cost is let's say 12 okay in that sense here what we are seeing that that the benefit of all together is more than that of the cost doesn't matter if the personal benefits is less but the communal benefit or the entire group's benefit is more than that of the cost then there is more chances than all of them will work together okay now this will be altruistic or this will be more helpful if it is if they are related okay if they are not related then there are less chances of grouping them together or getting beneficial outputs so what they will do is they will group together on the basis of the relatedness so if they are related and the benefit is collective which is when sum together more than that of the cost then that frequency or that trade let's say of grouping together will increase hope i am clear with and uh, all of that okay so any trade that is collectively shown increases the benefits of the group it will be more prominent in the particular society provided that the relationship should be more prominent okay giving an example few rats form different different groups let's say there are five rats in one particular group and there are five rats in this particular group okay let's say these are rat 1 this is rat 2 so given a particular task both of them are allowed to do a particular task and all of that task required group efforts so while doing the task it is more plausible that they will group up with each other if they are related okay more chances are there if they are related they will group up easily to do the task so you are more comfortable to do a task with your brother or with your family member rather than a stranger okay so if it's a, a related individual then you are more prone to get together to work and get reap the benefits out of it okay so this is how social insects or social organisms and social individuals work together okay so we see how related we are sometimes it may be related to particular let's say a state a particular area a particular can even that we find relatedness we find how can we relate each other and if if we find some sort of relatedness then we get together and work for a particular group good okay rather than working all together single few individual don't but most of the organisms in general try to group up with their more related individuals 